Getting a good haircut can be pricey, and it can be uncomfortable for some. Bobcat Update's Angela McInerney has a story about a hairstylist who creates a safe space for customers. Located in the Mambo Hair Studio at San Marcos Center is Marie's Safe Space. Hairstylist Marie Perez works hard to cater to the LGBTQ community by giving them a place where they can feel comfortable while getting their hair cut. The name Safe Space was chosen for a reason. I just realized that none of them were catered to a queer group of people. Um, so I was just like, you know what, like we all need a safe space. Somewhere where you can just go where you're accepted and no one like just judges you. Another factor that makes Safe Space unique, besides catering to the queer community, is that the studio considers hair length rather than gender. Um, I don't think you should be charged based off of that. I think it should be charged based off of the hair that we're working with, because that's our job. Um, so it didn't really make sense to be like, oh yeah, a man with long hair will get charged 30, but a woman with long hair will get charged 45, and it's just because of the gender. Customers enjoy Marie's overall personality as well as their skill. Mari is super sweet. Every time I come in here, they're always really nice, always looking for like a good conversation. If you just want to like de-stress and also get a haircut at the same time, like it's really nice to be in a safe space. <laughs> Marie says they hope to eventually own a shop instead of renting a space. Someday I'll have my own space where it's like literally just me and one other person. Um, and by one other person, I definitely mean my client. Um, I do want it to be more private for anybody who might have like a condition that they're not comfortable talking about in front of other people. Students can reach out for consultation on Instagram at Marie's Safe Space, Wednesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. For Bobcat Update, I'm Angela McInerney. Students at Texas State come from all over, whether from nearby cities and towns or different states. Each student has a unique way of coping. Spending time away from their families can cause anxiety, but some dive right into their new lives. For dealing with that, I plan on just immersing myself in activities here, surrounding myself with friends. But other students feel the need to call home to check on their families. How I cope is just calling my mom every now and then, just saying, hey. How's it going, you know? <laughs> Some don't feel as homesick as others, especially if they're able to immerse themselves into their new lives. I am not really homesick. I kind of like it better out here. Even so, many students miss their families and they'll carry reminders of their loved ones. So I have one on the back of my phone of some of my cousins and me. And then I have like a string of photos of me, my mom, and some of my cousins and my aunts. Speaking of families, parents also feel the loneliness when their child leaves for college. Becoming empty nesters often leaves them with the sense of what to do now when their homes feel more vacant. Yeah, we're just so. thinking out now what we're going to do because everything is around her, all these things that yeah. we do, you know. All our activities are all surrounded around her, our time, our calendar, our everything. Texas State's Counseling Center offers support to those who need help adjusting to their new way of living. For Bobcat Update, I'm Angela McInerney. Starting in Dunbar Park and making its way to the town square, the San Marcos Pride Parade was in full effect. Several organizations gathered to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community. Sylvia Sandoval, one of the parade organizers, says the event helps promote openness, something she didn't experience as a child coming out. I get to have something that uh, I wanted as a child, so I didn't get to have this growing up and I figured something simple like this could make a change for all the other kids when I was younger. Now that times have changed, the LGBTQ plus community is seeking greater support. The San Marcos Pride Parade helps provides that. I think it's really great because like, at least where I'm from, like there's a lot of pride and like when I first got to San Marcos, I was really worried that there wouldn't be anything. So I'm really proud that we have events like this so people can find their community and find support systems. Texas State has several student organizations, programs, and resources that embrace the LGBTQ plus community. For Bobcat Update, I'm Angela McInerney. Midterms, a word that indicates that students are halfway done with the semester. It's time to study hard if the goal is to maintain or improve one's grades. Students at Texas State vary in their approach. Uh, I would just go through my notes again and Usually they're pretty good about study guides, so I would, I would probably go through the study guides, read study guides, go through notes. I look at all of my notes and the PowerPoint slides if I have them at hand. I like to put them either in one huge doc and read through them, 
and kind of quiz myself. A helpful resource on campus is Slack. The Student Learning Assistance Center is a tutoring service for students. During midterms and finals, Slack gets extremely busy. The tutors are students too. They understand why some people stress out when it comes to studying. I've noticed that a lot of people that come here looking for advice, especially when it comes to nutrition and stuff like that, they get very nervous and it kind of like they want to scramble and scramble but I always let them know, like, just take your time. Professors can also help students prepare. A better habit to study is to do it every week and just learn each, each lesson. Maybe take some time on a Saturday whenever you get started to like revisit last week's lectures and all your classes and sort of revisit it so that you're comfortable with all that material. They remember the struggles they had when they were younger. So when I was a student, I waited till the last second, stayed up and pulled an all-nighter and crammed furiously to try to remember the stuff that I had blown off for the last eight weeks. Alkick Library is a popular spot for studying. The library's hours are 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. Monday through Thursday. From Friday through Saturday, the hours vary. For Bobcat Update, I'm Angela McInerney. Getting eight hours of sleep at night is recommended, but achieving that goal can be hard to do. Some students have developed routines to wind down for the night and get ready for bed. So I like to shower and um, put, put my room up in a way that makes me feel the most comfortable. Like I'll turn off the lights, I'll turn on the fan, I like to get it real cold, and then I'll climb in bed and uh, go to sleep. Usually I like to get my homework out of the way first thing whenever I get home, um, and then I try to do something I enjoy right before bed, so like talking to friends. An hour before I actually have to go to sleep, I'll like brush my teeth, wash my face, do my whole skincare routine, and then I just chill. But sometimes life gets in the way and sleep deprivation occurs. I'm tired today because I was scrolling all on my phone all last night. Like any student, definitely stress about assignments or just life in general. Staying up too late, staying on my phone is a big thing. Overcoming the odds and setting a sleep schedule can be difficult, but it is possible. Definitely putting away your phone at least like an hour before you have to go to bed. I recommend like any kind of physical activity kind of helps me. So I like to get up early and go to the gym. Um, I put my phone down either on my windowsill, which is like whenever I roll over, it's really out of my arm's reach. Sleep is needed to function coherently and a good night of rest is important to one's health. For Bobcat Update, I'm Angela McInerney.